Hey, good day, beautiful people. Greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it's Monday again. It is cloudy and rainy and windy, and it is a lovely autumn day in Belgium. We are continuing closing off our topic um, based on Zechariah 4 verse 6. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Um, in the previous video we talked about um, to trust in the Lord's Ruach, in His Spirit, which is necessary to build a temple. And the temple, we know that the temple spiritually also means our body, our soul, our whole being as a temple, dwelling place for the Spirit of God. Now let's think specifically about this uh, we talked about the lampstand and what the temple is to represent and the temple is indicative we said of God's presence through the spirit and the lampstand is a picture of God's light shining so God's light and God's presence to combine these the goal is that God's presence would be manifest and serve as a light to both the Israelites and the nations and for us as Christians today as well now, this, Zerubbabel is reminded, does not come through our own strength and efforts, but by God's own work and initiative. God makes himself known. So trust me. And that's the meaning of this passage, if we read that carefully, and if we try to hear and listen what the Spirit has to tell us. It's a message which the people of God have been learning from creation forward until today, and it will be so until the day God comes and takes us all home. Will Adam and Eve trust in God's provision or pursue provision by partaking of the forbidden fruit? Will Abraham, Isaac, Jacob trust in God's promise or in their own strength? Will Moses trust in God's leadership or slowly transfer his trust into the staff he holds in his own hands? Will the Israelites trust God to lead them into the promised land or their own military uh, powers and strength? We think about Gideon, Sam Samson, Saul, David, Solomon, all those great people. And they all had to learn this lesson. And it is a lesson we still need to learn today. Now, how do we apply this in our day-to-day -day life as part of the body of Christ, as reborn Christians, as a devoted child of God, our Heavenly Father? To consider how to apply this today, let's go back to the disciples tasked, tasked with feeding thousands of hungry people. Is a task really any different than the task of the temple and the lampstand? They, too, are the conduits of God's presence, a light to the nations. All those hungry people are present because the light of the world is in their midst. Now, everything to which the temple and the lampstand uh, pointed is found on that hill, in Jesus proclaiming the gospel. People still get hungry. People still get sick, still get tired, depressed overwhelmed with Im with emotions and feelings, disappointments, life. And just as Zerubbabel and the Israelites did not have the resources to build the temple, to properly image God, to be an accurate light to the nations and fend off in any form of invaders, spiritual or physical, so also the disciples do not or did not have the resources to feed us thousands of people. But just as God asked Zerubbabel to lead in the building, so now Jesus commands the disciples to feed the masses. The compassion of Jesus is always greater than our strength, and the need of the people is always greater than our resources. And you combine these two things, and it will wear you out. And this is why we must also remember the words of Zechariah in Zechariah 4 verse 6. It is not through our own strength or might that God's presence will be given and the light of the gospel will shine. Rather, this happens through His Spirit, through the Spirit of God. And what a tremendous comfort this is 
to those of us who would run ourselves ragged in what we think is obedience to the Lord. God isn't asking us to shine our strength. He's calling us to shine His. And that is not by might and not by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. May your day be blessed and may the light of God shine through you and in you and around you and upon you wherever you go. And may God's peace be with you. Amen.